Mini episode 36 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by the Pullins Group, delivering public affairs consulting and marketing services for small businesses trying to grow. Follow them on the web at PullinsGroup.com. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Okay, sitting down to take a look at the NFL. Rick Morris, Kyle Ross with you here. Breaking it down here in uh, mid-November. We're just past the midway point of the season and uh, getting ready to take a look at things. Uh, Kyle, since the last time we talked about a month or so ago, we've had a lot of uh, big developments here. In the AFC, of course, uh, we were talking about this off-air. The six teams that you and I had identified coming into the season that were going to be uh, the, the, the ones that everybody thought were going to make the playoffs. Let's start there. Let's take a look at uh, which ones we think and which ones we don't believe in still at this point, if any. Well, it's odd. You know, some of the teams obviously right now um, that we mentioned, and that's the premise I did want to begin with, Ricky. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought at the beginning of the year, once Peyton Manning was injured and then everyone just started kind of jumped on the Houston bandwagon, that any reasonable person would choose the same six teams in the AFC to make the playoffs. Those teams, the Patriots, Mm -hmm. the Jets out of the East, uh, Ravens, Steelers out of the North, Houston out of the South, and then San Diego out of the West. Mm Mm-hmm. At this point, and I know some of those teams have suffered some bad losses in the last couple of weeks. Others have come back with uh, you know big wins as well. I'm sticking with the same six right now to make the playoffs. Um, with New England, I, it, it's so funny how everyone was so cold on them going to that Jets game. They had not suffered three straight losses since 2002. Mm-hmm. I was all over the Patriots personally in that game. It, it seemed like a lot of people were buying, oh, this was going to be the Jets' time to – and, yeah, it was a big game for the Jets. It was a revenge game. But that being said, I just didn't – Belichick and Brady losing three straight times, really. And now for them it really opens up. If you look at the schedule, I think their schedule, I heard, was the easiest, mm-hmm. you know, the rest of the way. Yes. So I, I believe that they are going to be your number one seed. In the, and, you know, they were your team to win the AFC. Mine was the Jets, and that's not right. looking as good right now. But the Patriots – are, have the inside track at the number one seat. I do think they're going to get it. At most, I think they're going to lose one more game. I mean, you're looking at 12-4, and four, home field advantage. Now, does that matter? Because remember, this team has not won a playoff game since 2007. Right. And, and, and they are in no way the Green Bay Packers right now. They are beatable, New England. Right. And it's all the more amazing because you look at that defense – and, and some of the guys there, uh, it looks like they were holding tryouts down at Occupy Boston with some of the guys that are in there <laughs> yeah. because it's just well, amazing. I, know, was that, yeah. I was wondering what was on your mind while I was going through that soliloquy. <laughs> I see what you've come back with. Yes. You can see the wheels turning. Yes, yes. You know, but that's uh, – when I picked the Patriots to win the AFC, I mean, clearly I did not believe that their defense was going to be as poor as it is. That's the equalizer when we look at what we project out of them the rest of the way here because there is the chance – uh, obviously, that uh, one of these lesser lights can end up upending them if it turns into a shootout or it's a bad week for Brady. And that's the key. You know, obviously, in the NFC, we know who's number one. Mm-hmm. In the AFC, we don't. It seems right. to be a real revolving door. It was supposed to be Baltimore last week. They yeah. go you know, out to Seattle, which is a tough place. And we'll talk about Baltimore in a second. Mm-hmm. But Seattle is a tough place to play. Everyone's killing the Ravens for losing that game. I don't think it's game. that tough. <laughs> Seattle is a much different team at Quest Field than they are now. I mean, that's because they're absolutely pathetic. I mean, just abysmal away from there. Yeah. But, I mean, they're a respectable home team. They've eaten the Giants there as well, too. But New England is back to New England. They do not match up well with either Baltimore or Pittsburgh. No. And I think right now, if you were to force me Mm -hmm. to pick an AFC championship game, it would be New England against either Baltimore or Pittsburgh hosting them. And that's not a good matchup for New England because Pittsburgh's obviously already beaten them. Mm -hmm. Baltimore beat them in the playoffs a couple years ago. Baltimore and Pittsburgh built very similar. And, you know, obviously Pittsburgh's got the edge of quarterback that can exploit the poor Patriots secondary a little better than Flacco could. But still, I mean, it's it's wide open, but the Patriots are the team that I think have the inside track. I'm picking them 12-4 home field advantage. Having said that, though, and this is not – 
merely me being bitter Browns honk by pointing this out, Bill Belichick pones Pittsburgh in the postseason. It's a different story altogether, it seems like, once it gets to January. The thought of them going into Foxborough for the AFC Championship with the ghost of AFC Championships past, that's, I'll believe it when I see it. Really? Yeah. I, I don't, because... I... I mean, they they did just well. The game and, was at Heinz Field, and every the game time was at Heinz Pittsburgh Field. makes it to the Super Bowl, somebody else plays spoiler on the Patriots, like the Jets did last year. Pittsburgh's never had to go through them to get to a Super Bowl. Remember that? It, it's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that Pittsburgh's going to be the team that challenges sure. them because I mean, keep in mind, Baltimore's beaten them twice. Right. You know, Baltimore's the team that I think is going to be your second seed as we kind of like move down the pecking order in the AFC. Yeah. Because they've obviously got the inside track to win the North Mm -hmm. by sweeping the season series already from the Steelers. I don't see the Steelers finishing with a better record than the Ravens. I easily could see them both finishing 11 and five. Yeah. Right now. And obviously, you know, that benefits the Ravens. They'll get the tie break and Houston, you know, a week ago, I thought Houston was a team who also, by the way, lost to Baltimore. So that hurt them too. But playing in that weak division, I thought Houston had a chance to challenge for that second seed. With Shaw out of the equation, I no longer think that. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, a lot. The question now, when you talk about the Texans, is will they hold on in the South to win that? What's you know a division that's just a two horse race anyway? I can't see any way that they won't. I just can't. And I told you off air, I have never taken up the belief that Leinert is, is a complete bust. I think Leinert's got a chance to surprise really? some people the rest of the way well, here. He, I, I, he showed some nice flashes in Arizona. He did. He, he had, I don't he know. To games. me, I mean, the last I'd heard of Matt Leinert, he was hanging out in the hot tub with your buddy Nick Lachey. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not sold on Matt Leinert. Now, the good news is off a of bye, they're going to play Jacksonville. Yeah. So they win that game. They're 8-3. and three. It would take a pretty bad choke job, and I think Tennessee's going to lose at Atlanta this week. Right? I mean, yeah, that's not you know that's not a shocking statement. I mean, they're a seven point dog. Right. Atlanta's off a loss. Atlanta, you know, a, a very good team at the good Georgia team. Dome, yep. except against New Orleans, yeah. and you know they're also usually very good in the Mike Smith Matt Ryan era off a loss. Right. So that would drop Tennessee to five and five. You know, if Houston's at eight and three, and, and you know Tennessee's you know week twelve game pending, that's a pretty insurmountable lead. So they will hold on, mm-hmm. but I, I don't see them you know surpassing the record of a Baltimore or a Pittsburgh. Now they did beat Pittsburgh, right. Houston, so that works to their advantage. But I see Baltimore second, Houston third. Okay. Houston, I mean, you, you do that. I mean, look, I mean, let's yeah. take a look. I have that Houston's schedule right. here. Let, 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 let's just go through the schedule here with Houston. Okay. If you think they can hold. I mean, you obviously buy more in a liner than I do. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Do. I, he's got a great supporting cap. That team can run the ball. I watched yeah. them mm-hmm. play Tampa Bay this past week. They mm-hmm. annihilated Tampa Bay. That right. was, I mean, people are kind of curious, oh, was Houston for real? I'm telling you. Yeah. Before that injury to Shop, I was buying this team as a legit threat to win this AFC. Yeah. They, I mean, they don't have that signature win. They did beat Pittsburgh in a game that Andre Johnson did not finish, right. which looks pretty good. But, you know, it was kind of early. Uh, you know, Pittsburgh, you know, at the time was, was not playing as well as they are now. Right. So people were a little unsure. But, I mean, Houston, they're at Jacksonville. I think, like I said, that can mm-hmm. be a win. They're 8-3 and three with five to go. They still have Indianapolis, yep. which is going to be a win. So that's nine and three. Uh, they've got Carolina at home, and they've got a Tennessee team at home that they already beat forty-one to seven. Right. So the only the other two games they're at home for Atlanta, uh, at Cincinnati. They could conceivably drop those two, mm-hmm. and still be you know eleven and five or ten and six. So they're yeah. in good, they are in good shape. And, and like I said, I don't see ten, Tennessee would only win the division if Houston just collapses. Yeah. Tennessee's not going to go up and grab the brass no. ring. I, I'm not that big. A, you know, we, we were not buyers on Tennessee the last time we did this when they were like 3-1. Right. and one. We told people, look for them to come back down to earth. Yep. Um, so I, I'm not a big buyer on the Titans to begin with anyway. But um, So I think Houston will hold on. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to be your top wild card. Yeah. The fifth seed. And then the Jets, I know everyone now wants to kill the Jets after, because they lost the game. Everyone thought they should have won to the Patriots. But they're going to still – they will, I think, get the last playoff spot. Yeah. yeah. They're going to beat – I, I like them against Denver. That role. <laughs> yeah, I, I like – yeah, obviously. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is a team that went on the road last year, beat Peyton Manning and Tom Brady in successive weeks. Yep. I, they've got to win tomorrow night against Denver, don't they? Oh, they, they, they are. They, they, I mean, they have to win. So if they get that – I mean, to me, Mark, Mark Sanchez, okay, who yeah. has not lived up to my expectations this year. I thought he would make a leap a little bit, and, and he hasn't. But – the bottom, he, I know, he's not an elite quarterback, but 
while he may not win you games, I don't think he really loses you games either. Is well, kind of my t- everyone wants to kill Sanchez right now, and I think that's unfair. I, I think Mark San everyone wants to call him overrated because he's on not the, the the cover of non football magazines, right. okay, and he came from USC, but he's just he's the quarterback of a big market team. That doesn't make him overrated. I understand he does a mean karaoke rendition of She's Only 17. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. There's, there's my t- typical tastelessness. Yeah. But, no, it's a thing, <laughs> you know, when I, when, I, when I talk about, when I stick up for Colt McCoy and I say look at the weapons he doesn't have, it might sound a little weird for me to say the same thing about Sanchez. It's a different scale. Obviously, it, it's it, miles above what a Colt McCoy has. And yet, I look at this. Santonio Holmes is a guy who probably should be a number one, but never will be. Burris is up and down. Keller's coming into his own as a tight end, but you wouldn't call him elite. He's not a Jermichael Finley or an Antonio Gates. I mean, I look at what's around him. He doesn't have any guys who can make him better. There's no Andre Johnsons in that. He has a... You want to talk about overrated. I yeah. think, you know, it's not Sanchez. I think it's the people around him that are over. That's they a great – you you made a great point right there, Ricky. I, I, look for me. He's a, he has a lot of overrated people at the skill positions around him. He does. And that defense, the big question, you know, the big, you know, commentary, you mm-hmm. know, coming out of that game last week against the Patriots was – the end of the first half. And by the way, they looked good in the first half, the Jets. Let's not write them off. Sanchez right. played well in the first half. It was a right. low-scoring New York Jets style of game. They did come out and set the tempo. Right. He you know, runs the draw for a touchdown after he called the timeout, which he admitted was a mistake. But at the same time, I wonder what was being said on this. We know what was kind of being said to you know the sideline reporter and in the locker room. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't go over well with Rex Ryan. But I wonder what was being said on the sideline. At that time, at the timeout. Mm-hmm. Don't you, okay, it, it wasn't a smart move that he called the timeout. Right. But you do score. Don't, to me, when you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe we call a timeout. Doesn't that kind of just set a bad feeling for the defense? Like, shouldn't you be like, okay, defense, look, we gave him some time. Right. Just go out there and do your thing and stop him. Instead, you're almost setting your defense up to fail. And that Jets defense has not been as good as advertised either this right. year. Um, I do think they're going to come through with one of their better performances against Tebow. They will. Yeah, they will. Uh, they, yeah, I do think they, they'll they'll be challenged, and I think they'll get it done. Since, since all they have to do is prepare for their team to play rugby, yes, I do think they are well, going. We're going to get to Tim Tebow. <laughs> we're going to get to Tim Tebow, and I'm going to defend Te- Tim okay. Tebow vehemently in about five minutes. Okay. Here. Well, you know, as far as it goes with the Jets, the other thing too, you talked about people thought that they were going to come in and take out the Patriots. I mean. I I didn't have a great feel for that game. I didn't have a great feel for most of the games last week, which is why I got massacred and I knew I would going in. But by the same token, if anybody thought that the Patriots were ripe, that, oh, changing of the guard, OMG, what, what have the Jets done to make you believe that the Jets have not had the kind of season where they're they're just blowing everybody off the rails. I, I don't get where somebody would have assumed coming in. The Patriots' defense has been pathetic, but beyond that, what would have given anybody the notion that this is changing of the guard time last Sunday night? Well, the, the back to prisoner of the moment stuff, back to back losses yeah. for the Patriots. Now, I did think, look, I'm guilty. I said the Jets would win this division. I said they'd represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Okay. I do think if you're the Jets, from their perspective, you got to win that game. It's a revenge game in the mm-hmm. division. Your rivals off back-to-back losses. They're in your place. Home teams have done very well in the regular season in that particular rivalry since Rex Ryan came in. Mm-hmm. I believe the home team was 5-0 and straight up and against the number yep. uh, in regular season P- Pats-Jets games. But to me, it, it works the other way. Right. You know, the, the Patriots were desperate. You know, they don't lose three. We talk, said 02 was the last time they did it, which, by the way, was the last time they didn't make the playoffs. Right. The Browns right. won a tiebreaker over them that year. People forget that. That was a three-way thing. I think there weren't uh, the Broncos in that, too. They it may was, have. They, yeah, it was, one of those, it was one of those things where it was like, how can you defend? As a Browns fan at the time, I couldn't defend that. Yeah, like, yeah, give it to the Patriots. Like, I, I, yeah, I don't yeah. care what the tiebreaker is. <laughs> yeah. The Patriots are yeah. better. Yeah. Give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I felt. But... Um, <laughs> But, yeah, the, the Jets, to me, I, I don't they just have not been able to. The Patriots, I thought it's amazing that they have been able to survive without, you know, with as bad as that defense has been. Right. But, you know, because so that team essentially, they're kind of getting an Indianapolis territory where it's Brady and not, not much else. Right. You know, I mean, his supporting cast, you talk about a bad supporting cast, his supporting cast is awful, I think. The, the Gronkowski's good. Well, and you know what? And, but and that's other an than that, thing. there's not a lot of, like, 
you know, people, I, I hate to do this. I, you know, yeah. I'm not trying to, you know, deify your world or anything <laughs> like that. But, you know, it's, it's the old typical, hey, you know, I don't think anyone's starting any of these skilled players on their fantasy teams this week. Yeah. You know, I right. mean, which is, I mean, in some regards, that does kind of make a point, well, there's not a lot of talent here surrounding right. the quarterback. Right, but by the same token, and this is this is interesting when you talk about Indianapolis with the defense. We'll, we'll we'll touch upon at the at the end when we're talking the AFC, the dregs here, now that the Colts. It's a very interesting thing. You talk about that. It's very instructive. I know there have only been moments the last couple of years where Bob Sanders was in there for Indianapolis, but how much? And it's hard to extrapolate him being healthy with a healthy Bob Sanders. Indianapolis wouldn't suck nearly as much as they do this year. That defense wouldn't be nearly as as as, as much of a sieve as it's been. Plus, they've given up I, given the situation and the circumstance. I understand they have, but but that's the thing with Indian with, with New England. New England doesn't have a difference maker on their defense like a Bob Sanders to where we can say things would be different. Now, the difference between New England and Indianapolis, of course, is they can and they do go and outscore the other team, and that that continues. To, uh, to happen, but uh, we, we've talked about all six of the teams here with the exception of uh, the team that in the sewer pit known as the AFC West. I, w- I wanted to hold on one thing, because okay. the NFC West, I, I, in, or the AFC West. AFC West, yeah. Pardon me, unless if you're going to shock me here. Okay. We don't think the Super Bowl winner's coming out of the AFC West, right? No, no, okay. no. Are you sticking with your pick of the Patriots to win the AFC? Oh, tough one, because... Eh. I'm putting you on the spot right, all right now. All right, I'm yeah. putting you on the spot. Be a man. If it's... I, I'll 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 stay with them. Uh, if Baltimore can go in there and beat them, they can. But given that it possibly could still be Pittsburgh, and like I said, there's a mental block there. Pittsburgh can't beat them in the postseason. You hate Pittsburgh. Never had, it. Hate I, it. I hate Baltimore too. But I'm, okay. I'm giving credit either way. I mean that that's that's the game. I Pittsburgh and Baltimore. I root for the blimp to crash into the field. Well, that's so not a very nice thing I don't, to say. Is it? Well, it's, well, it's so how I feel. But, but you're being a man, and you're I'm sticking being a man with the Patriots. I'm, I'm okay. stick with them. Allow yeah. me to not be a man. I'm going to change right. from the Jets to the Ravens. All I, right. I think this is. See, it's Flacco. Weird. Flacco's still got to prove it to me. True, but but this is always like the lamest sort of justification. Mm-hmm. I'm going to use it. Doesn't it just feel like the Ravens year? You know, like all the other teams have kind of had their chance. The Ra- sincerely, Seattle. Sincerely, yeah, see, uh, my good. See, my Houston. He, he, here's Houston. my first of any zings yeah, today here. Okay. Well, my good buddy Colin Coward always <laughs> likes to talk about. You never want to judge, and this goes to you hipsters out there too. Want to judge a band by its worst album? You should never judge a team by its worst loss. I think. Those things happen. You know, the Jacksonville loss is pretty inexcusable. I do not think last week's loss to Seattle is as bad as it's made out to be. I and by know. the way, the Ravens are going to go out, I think, and tattoo Cincinnati. By this the week. way, uh, the Raven, what do you think about that? I think the Ravens. I think they're going to also, because Cincinnati is oh, a do. fraud. We'll talk about that a little oh, later. Oh, you do? Yeah, think I think Okay. A, I was all about Pittsburgh last week beating yeah. Cincinnati because I'm not oh, a buyer in Cincinnati either. But. That was my lock of the week was the Steelers. I yeah. mean, that was... But, but I really like... But the loss to Seattle is not as bad as... I know Seattle stinks, but, and, I, and I said they were going to be the worst team in the right. league coming into the year. But they're much better at Quest uh, Field. They're, than, they're a bad team. They're hey, a very bad team. Well, I mean, they've beaten the Giants, too, there. I mean, again, they, I mean... You know. the, the, you're, look, I, are, am I going to start putting Seattle Seahawks NFC West hats? No. Ba- but, I mean, Baltimore also dumped, like you said, to Jacksonville and got throttled by Tennessee. How many oh, bad performances are we supposed to throw out exactly? Okay, well, here's the thing. Two of those okay. losses came immediately after Pittsburgh for years. If you talk to people yeah. in the league, it has been said – how poor teams perform the Car week crash. after playing yeah. Pittsburgh. They're so physical. They take a lot out of you. Yeah. Magnify that with the Ravens. I think that's it's to the nth degree with Baltimore because yeah. it's their rival. They yeah. beat them both times. Yeah. The way they beat them both okay. times. The first game was treated, you know, some have said like their Super Bowl. The second game was a huge come from behind last wow. second victory. I think it's excusable. And I, like I said, Pittsburgh's been in there recently. New England, you know, Going back a couple of years, you have to go for their most recent. Um, the, the Jets have been knocking on the door. I still think the Jets can win a playoff game. To me, sure. at the end of the day, the mm-hmm. final four, and people hate this when it's the same teams, yeah. but it's going to be the final four in the AFC. Yeah. It's going to be the same final four, pardon me. Yeah. Patriots, Jets, Ravens, Steelers. I think the Steelers yeah. and Jets will both win on the road in Wild Card Weekend over the Texans and then whoever the the West winner is, which will be the four seed. Well, to hear your theory on uh, Pittsburgh and, and Baltimore, then Baltimore better hope round two ain't a Steeler game because then you're basically saying Baltimore would have no chance in the AFC Championship. Well, I'm well, you're paying attention, aren't All you? Right. Yes, 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 I am. Okay. Yeah, I, I, that's very true. You're right. Okay. And, and the way it works out, according to my kind of logic, it would be. I think it's going to be. 
I actually do envision mm-hmm. an exact rematch of last year's divisional round. I think it's going to be Patriots, Jets, and Ravens, Steelers. Except okay. this time the Ravens will get the Steelers at home and beat them. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. I could see that. I'll... I'll I, I don't. I don't see Flacco going into New England and getting it done in the AFC Championship. Does he have to though? See, people always say, "Oh, I," you know, it, you know, people always say Sanchez is going to have to go into Foxborough and win. Flacco is going to have to go into here and win. Doesn't Flacco just have to screw up and the defense do their thing? No, uh, you, you still have to be a decent enough game manager, so to speak. Here. True. Well, I mean, yeah, you know. but I mean, well, I mean, there's a difference between having to throw four touchdown passes and not having to throw four I interceptions. Agree. I think that's a huge difference. That is a very big difference. Uh, so. All right, so we've got all that out of the way except for the sludge pit known as the AFC West. Uh, you and I both said, you know, we'll, we'll stick with San Diego. I still will. I'm a stubborn guy. I mean, it took me until last week to get off the Eagles bandwagon for yeah. making the playoffs. So uh, with the thing with San Diego, again, don't exactly know what's going on with Phillip Rivers. It's interesting to hear a lot of people speculate. Oh, he's stunk. And, I mean, he's yeah. I, this is a guy I thought was going to be – a good bet to maybe win MVP yeah, this year because he was because he was going to have more weapons this year than he did last year. He did he had one of his best overall efforts last year, particularly when you look at having to overcome. And, and and now he's got Ryan Matthews in there healthy this year. He did eventually get Gates in there. He's got uh, Vincent Jackson in there. All these things that he didn't have for much or all of last year. And, uh, again, yeah, he's, he's just been uh, stinking it up by his own standards had, here. The offensive line was – I mean, did you watch the Oakland game last week? I didn't First, get a chance to okay. see it. Okay, it, it was on the NFL Network, so you're one of six okay. people. You know, I'm one yeah. of six people who gets that. But, anyway, that result, more than any result mm-hmm. last week, shocked me. I had Oakland dead – I am not a buyer in this Carson Paul. I, I thought Carson Palmer was heading for the Donovan McNabb scrap heap. Mm-hmm. Shame – I don't know if that game spoke – more positively to Oakland or negatively to San Diego? Probably I'm both. Yeah, I mean, because I, I really thought Oakland was a team that I thought was going to be very poor this year, mm-hmm. coming into me the year. Too. They surprised me. I mean, I thought they were going to be one of the worst teams in the AFC. I thought they were very fraudulent 8-8 eight and eight last year. Yeah, I did too. But And so they had started pretty okay, kind of similar to last year. They're a 500 team. They're 4-4. Four and four. Going into that game, I was predicting. I had them, you know, halfway point. I kind of mapped out how I thought they'd finish mm-hmm. going into the last week's games. I had Oakland finishing five and eleven. I I thought they were going to fall off a cliff. With I think Palmer. I said six and ten. I was right there with yeah, you. I mean, so I was shocked by that result. But that being said, I'm with you. I'm going to stick with San Diego just because I don't believe in Palmer. Mm-hmm. Kansas City's done without. Ca- I mean, they I didn't, are but I, without Castle. Yeah. Now eight and eight or nine and seven is going to win. It's, I think it's going to take nine and seven to win this division. It, I think it's going to take nine and seven, but the thing is with San Diego, it's funny. I was, I it wouldn't be a, a show, a podcast with you without me referencing this name, Nick Flasher. We've always had a long-standing debate, me and my good friend Nick Flasher. We got to get this about, guy on for one of these. He, I think he's he's willing to do it. By the way, he's, nice. yeah, he's willing to do it. All right. Um, and we always had a long-standing debate about the Philip Rivers Drew B- Brees debate. Okay. Now, no, now knowing you don't know Nick, but I mean knowing his opinions, and you definitely know my opinions. Okay. You know who's on whose side there. Okay, I was always a River supporter. Always said San Diego was not in the wrong for what the decision they made to jettison Breeze and stick with Rivers. Rivers was younger; he had a higher upside. Drew Breeze was not going to the Hall of Fame as a member of the San Diego Chargers. I agree. His what happened is, and this is the biggest mark. Yeah, I'm not making excuses for Philip Rivers here by any means, but this is what happened. Drew Brees went to a spot where he has incredible – if you talk to people inside the league, mm-hmm. they will tell you no coach-quarterback combo has better synergy than Brees and Sean Payton. Right. It's the – let me make a wrestling reference to kind of uh, you know, preview for later. You know, the, yeah. you know, our last set of tapings that we're doing tonight here, so to speak. <laughs> you know, they, they are – listen to this. You, you tell me. I'm having bad flashbacks of Orlando <laughs> circa 93. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you something. Okay, you're not going to get this uh, on the worldwide leader, this kind of analysis here. Are you ready for this? What? I believe that Drew Brees and Sean Payton are the NFL's answer to Paul Heyman and Raven with their brand of synergy. How okay. the quarterback is – you're like one of three people who probably understand that. <laughs> But okay, but Breeze is kind of the extension of Peyton on the field. Where if you watch that game, and I do, I, I watch a, a ton of these games, and I've watched San Diego multiple times over the last couple of years. Right. And I'm always like, how can San Diego be this mediocre? Yeah. How is this not one of the best teams in the league right now? Shame on me for not the answers right there. North Turner's Norvell atrocious. Turner. Nor, Nor, Nor Turner. Yeah. In, in, 
a, a, a era where this country has seen record unemployment levels at times. How is this guy not part of that eight to ten percent? Yeah. I mean, I don't wish you know that on anybody. Maybe he, he should probably go the Wade Phillips route. And by the way, Wade Phillips has Houston's defense number one. He does. In the we we failed to mention that. I we talked about that. How when he was his last DC stint, mm-hmm. he took San Diego in one year from 31st ranked unit to 11th. Right, even better job with Houston this year. So let's give it a little tip of the cap to Wade and without Phillips. Without Mario Williams, yeah, a little tip of the cap to Wade Very Phillips. Good. So I always yeah. thought was a nice man. And Norv Turner may be a nice man, but he's an offensive coordinator in head coach's clothing right now. Yeah, he yeah. cannot. Li- Horrible. They, there's no synergy. I mean, if you look at it, Rivers is always looking at the sideline, yelling yep. at Turner. Turner's got that stupid look on it. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to like disparage the man personally, but he's got a dumb look on his well, you'd face. You'd be calling him Noriega if you were disparaging, <laughs> yes, him, yes. disparaging him personally. Yeah, so, you know what? <laughs> Stop that. But I just think that ultimately, based on talent, and I could be wrong, I'm going to stick with San Diego just because I don't believe in Palmer. Kansas City's done. Right. And that would leave us with one other T well, to yeah. talk about. We well, have we have to jump into this we, foray, don't we? we, we, we with we with do. Timmy Tebow, we do. A man who you know you talk about an extension of someone on the field. He's an extension of your politics, I believe, <laughs> on the field. I mean, I'm surprised you're not big of a Tebow. And yet you're work. defending it. If we're to look at the Tim Tebow worldview and who's defending him and who's not on this, uh, it just goes to show you. You and I can separate our politics from our football because yes. we are diametrically opposed on him. On the gridiron, and my, my guess would be off as well. But, uh, again, you know, I made the rugby. I like his commercial when he's swinging the chain around a lot better than the other one. I'll <laughs> tell you that much. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you that. I, I like the other one, and uh, Scott Fujita can suck it if he doesn't like the other one, by the way. And I don't care if he plays for my team. But that that's my point. I uh, didn't personally. know Scott Fujita made it any yeah, sort of Scott, state. I, he, he did. He uh, did. Well, I like Scott Fujita now. He, <laughs> he did. Uh, Scott, <laughs> Scott, Scott Fujita needs to uh, shut his mouth and uh, produce on the field a little bit more before he gets to opine. Oh, so you have to produce on the field to speak politics well, is what you're saying now. Because his politics are different than mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. That's the key. There we go. There in lies there the key, go. Kyle yes. Ross. Okay, I love that. Right, I wanted yeah. to get that out of you. Yeah, no, no, no. no but that's, well, I mean, I made the rugby joke before, but but – this is a team that justifiably is allergic to the forward pass because when he chucks it up there, you're lucky if it's going to be within 15 feet of the route the guy's running. Well, that's interesting because I saw him throw a beautiful pass to seal the deal last week against Kansas City to Eric Decker. Eric 50. Decker's having now, a great year, by he, the way. He, he has, but he's yeah. got he, – he, come on. If Eric Decker's your number one receiver, you got a lousy receiving yeah. core. Look, th- th- this is – now, if you check the tape – yeah. Well, let's start with this. All mm-hmm. right, not to be a oh, tool just so guy. I don't <laughs> like that, but I, let me tell you something. We first talked about uh, the NFL, our very first podcast together. Yeah. I advocated Denver go with Tim Tebow sooner than later. I'm going to tell you why. Let's see what you got. Yes, that's number one. And here's number two. Because with Kyle Ort, look, look I, I've, just, I've said this on you know, your Facebooks and all sorts of social media to all mm-hmm. these people who are hating on Tebow. Right. Here's my question to the anti-Tim Tebow contingent. Okay. And it has not been answered yet. All right. What viable alternative are you proposing if Tim Tebow doesn't start? What is the other option? Look, I'm not saying no one who supports Tebow is saying this guy is a Pro Bowl quarterback. This guy will lead you to the playoffs. This guy will lead you to the Super Bowl. I don't believe that. But what is the viable alternative to starting Tim Tebow? This is a bad team. Denver. Yeah. This is a everyone would agree. No one before this year bought Denver as a playoff team. Right. And let me just go on record. Kyle Horton's a loser. Okay. He's he's <laughs> a loser. He had lost twenty one of twenty seven starts since that six and zero start with uh, Josh McDaniel. All Remember right. that they started six and zero his first six games. Everyone thought he was Das Wonder Kid, and yeah. then they felt that they did nothing the remain the remainder of his tenure. Six and twenty one. I don't care who you are. I don't care who the backup is in this league. That's hit the bricks, pal. Okay. Okay. Kyle Orton has, unlike Tebow, unlike Tebow, Rick Morris mm-hmm. has a large enough body of work. Just ask mm-hmm. the people in Chicago. I have many friends in the city of Chicago. Okay. To suggest he's a loser. He's not going to lead you anywhere. Will Tim Tebow? You said it best a minute ago. You don't know. Let's see what you got. By the same token, here here's the thing too. And what they've done the last couple weeks has been pretty clever. But we know in this league there's a shelf life. You look at what Miami oh, yeah, did with I the Wildcats. Yeah, I was, you're absolutely right you, where you're going with this. They've got to move in the second half of the season 
to a more conventional offense because that's what they're going to rise or fall by in the long t- in the long term. And he ultimately is not going to cut it. My I believe in such an offense, anything that places more of a premium on passing accuracy or, to be fair, passing at all, which would be uh, pretty much against what they're doing these days. But it's it's a thing where I agree with you. They're better off playing him for right now. But don't I think- you don't you think now? I didn't mean to cut no, you off, no, no, but, but, but this just kept in mind. Two-part question here because okay. I stutter. Okay. Should he be the start of the remainder of the year? Sure. Okay. Is it to his actual benefit to not name him officially? as? Because, first of all, I'm going to rip John Fox and John Elway in about a minute. Okay. Okay. Because they're, 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 they're behaving like morons, in my opinion. By, Morons. By having been tough on him as the whole way through here and not giving him a break? No, or? by not believing in him. Oh, Being right. tough on him is, is, is correct. Uh, I, I'll give a little tip of the cap for Fox for the way they have but, retooled the offense. But here's the thing. By not official, kind of like dogging him a little bit, does that kind of motivate Tebow, do you think, a little better? to play? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you'd have to ask him, and, he, and he'll deny it, and he'd deny it if he did. But is it better to kind of like light that fire under Tebow by not officially turning the keys over? Because to me, it would be... It's incomprehensible to have to bring Kyle Orton back. Brady Quinn, right. who did not get a fair shot in Cleveland, either. did not at all. You got, you got nope. a feel for him he, because Tebow's kind of getting the, the opportunity that he never got here. Right. You know, it, it's interesting that Tebow uh, Orton is sort of a rehashing of Quinn Anderson. It is a little bit. Although I don't know. I think the pieces are a little bit better. A little more. You know, I, I don't know if Tim Tebow's a – he's certainly not a better prototypical passer than Brady Quinn. No. I don't know, maybe he is. But to me, here's the thing with Tebow, too. You've invigorated a fan base of what's going to be a bad team. I mean, you could at least sell something to these people. People that no one would be talking about the Denver Broncos right now if Tim Tebow was not the starting quarterback. This is the equivalent, though, of the, the Broncos winning this way is the equivalent of, of shooting steroids into their ass yeah. because this is not sustainable. What you're they're right. doing is it's, not sustainable. It's, it's short term, but here's your... And, here, and, and all you're doing, how are you going to get rid of the guy after a year like this when you're overachieving like this? See, Fox and Elway, and, and again, I, I loathe John Elway, but I'm going to stick up for him here and, and purely in the I sense believe he's the greatest of, quarterback of all time, just so you know, John Elway. Wow. Better than Montana? Better than Otto Graham? Wow. That's amazing. Certainly better than Otto Graham. Better, better. I got Otto on my number two all-time list behind Montana. That's that's amazing you would say well, that. Well, I know. You also okay. have Otto Wands, I think, <laughs> on your number two list of all-time wrestlers. Okay. All right. Let me tell you something. Catch Wrestling Association. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> but um, great he, reference. But, no, well, because I, I do have respect for John Elway when he's on the field. And, by the way, yeah. here's my biggest justification. I don't want to get off the beaten path no, here. No, no, that's fine. With Elway, though. Right. Took three terrible. You talk about taking bad Denver teams places. Right. John Elway can tell you a little thing about that. He took three bad Denver teams right. to Super Bowls in right. the 80s. And him and Fox are trying to do it right over the long haul, and now they're having to do this gimmicky crap. Well, here's the hot thing. Hot shotting the ratings, Kyle Ross. It is. It is hot. But here's the thing. Don't you agree that Denver, it doesn't matter who, unless if John Elway regains his 1989 form puts the old number seven jersey on, and himself comes down right. under center, this team's not making – well, well here's but, what's funny. They do have a chance to make the playoffs. And that right crap now. Now, they yeah, they now they're not going to. The schedule right. – let's look at the schedule, shall we? Because <laughs> it is hard, and yeah. here's the thing. I think when you look for at the end of this, it you're right. It, it I love how you referenced the Wildcat mm-hmm. because – it is gimmicky, yeah. but when you have a terrible roster, Denver, you talk about no skill position players. Right. They trade Brandon Lloyd. The running backs are hurt. Tebow has nothing to work with. Right. To me, is gimmick, gimmicky and is against the grain and maybe wrong, as you said it is, mm-hmm. and short-sighted. I think you just have to roll with it the rest of the year. It's not going to work. All right, but to me, the Chris Carters, the Merrill Hodges, the Hipsters on you know Facebook, these Monday morning quarterbacks, who's going to be the first to call? Oh, Tim Tebow stinks! Wow, you're awesome, buddy. Because what is the alternative? You know, what is the alternative to Tim Tebow starting right now? There yeah. is none. He should. But here's their schedule, by the way. Uh, Jets tomorrow night. They're going to lose. Right at San Diego, a critical division game. We'll find out a lot after this. But then after – after I'm not going to – again, theoretically, it should be a loss. Right. At Minnesota. Minnesota's a team we'll, – we'll see how they do this. I think they can steal a game from Oakland this week, by the way. 
But um, then they've got Chicago and New England at home. They'll be a home dog in both those. Mm-hmm. At Buffalo, it's going to be cold, obviously. This just yeah. in Buffalo gets cold. And they're Kansas City uh, in the finale. When I look at that, at, at best, that's three wins, which yeah. would get them to seven. Yep. So they're not going to make their playoffs. No, they won't. But here's the thing. And you're going to be stuck with them next year. That's what Fox and Elway are looking at. But here's the thing. Again, what's the vi- unless if you go out – and get draft a quarterback. another quarterback. It's a, it's a great draft class. But they're not going to be high enough to get one of the great ones, I don't think. Barkley, even Matt, Matt Barkley's moving up. Landry jump, but Right. Obviously, Luck's going to the Colts at number one. Right. Okay, that's a formality. Mm-hmm. And then Jones and Barkley, they're not making it out of the top ten. Denver's not going to be – I don't think right. he's going to have a top ten pick. Maybe they will. Griffin's going to go somewhere but here's the thing. in there. Let's, okay, so you don't think Tebow can get it done. Right. In, in a – you know, the uh, – the mainstream prototypical offense. Okay, yeah. you don't think it. Well, yeah. What, again, let's just try it. What do you have to lose? Again, John Fox is a first-year head coach with a lot of cap. By the way, last time John Fox, who who, who thinks he's such a genius, mm-hmm. last time this guy was in a big game, ten and a half point home favorite in the playoffs to Arizona. Jake Delholm threw about seventy-two interceptions that game. Yep. And w- what's he done lately, John right. Fox? Okay, except in Carolina, that team regressed ever since that moment. They went from twelve to eight to one win. Right. Okay, so I don't want to hear about John Fox, NFL genius. Last time John Fox was in a big game, the halftime show ended up changing the political climate in this country for the better, Kyle <laughs> oh, Ross. <come> on. <laughs> I knew you would like that. But My hat's off to you. Thank you. you. What, what, have you been waiting seven years to use that on me? Okay. But here's the thing. Let's surround him with some people. Let's not – look, Brandon Lloyd, yeah. I, I think – was not on board with Tim Tebow. No. So if that's the case, you do have to trade him. Right. Because Tebow, and fair or unfair, you do have to buy into him. And I think the people there do buy into him. You know, he people want to make fun of Tim Tebow, but he does seem to have kind of this, like, positive, can-do attitude. And look, you know me. I'm not, I mean, that ain't <laughs> me. But, you know, I mean, I listen to Tebow. I kind of want to play with the guy, you know? You, yeah, I go play with you. You want to catch a pass that is the result of him taking a step backwards, jumping in the air, and wildly flinging his uh, his arm yes, for the ball to you. But, yes. the, but the the other players both seem to. And here's the thing that no one's the defense is playing a lot better. By the way, they are. And they played some bad teams. Let's just give it. A, the bottom line is this. Yeah. With Tebow, he's not as bad as his detractors say. Right. He is, and he's not as meaningful because i don't think anyone's saying he's great right he's not as meaningful as important as his supporters say to me he's like let's just let's just keep going with it kyle orton's done in denver i think we agree on he that. Is, he i mean is. he's done and i think right. he's, and he's not a real starter he's a he, kyle orton to me is kind of that spot backup guy who yeah. can maybe come in you know throw a 300 yard game 300 sure. yards in a loss and, and brady quinn i, I don't know it's, although he never got a fair shake in cleveland i don't think he's very good Ky- kyle orton is a trillionaire's kelly holcomb essentially but uh you know, he's he he can do well in in his role. All right, that division there. We talked about some of the dregs that are there. The remaining dregs in the AFC. We already talked about. Colts are going to get sucked for a while. Are they going to lose every game? Uh, or do they win one? They probably they probably will lose every game. You think I, I so? Think. Well, here's the thing. And they've given up. We talk about our power. You know, yeah. you and I both post our power rankings now yeah. every week. Uh, you know, at the blog. Fdhlounge.blogspot.com, yeah. baby. And we've obviously. I don't know of anyone in in. in right now in the human race that would right. not have them last. Right. But here's how bad they are when you incorporate Vegas. You know, I always like to take the Vegas perspective when I do mine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Vegas experts, of yes, course. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. They were a th- – last week, going into last week, I had Jacksonville 31, Indianapolis 32. Those teams played. Right. Okay, this is just it. Jacksonville was a three-point favorite on the road. Like that – I mean – you know, yeah. I mean, you know gambling. The, the old adage is if two teams are even, the home right. team will be favored by three. Right. What does it say then that Jacksonville, or pardon me, Indianapolis is a three-point home dog to the second worst team? I mean, yeah. they are significantly worse than everyone else. And when you think about it, at home against yeah. the second worst team, that's probably your best chance to win. They've got they do off a bye. They will get Carolina at home. Yeah. Now Carolina, you got to wonder if Newton maybe hits. I, it, who I'm a huge buyer on, and we'll mm-hmm. talk about them when we hit the NFC. Maybe hits a. Maybe they can steal that. But other than that, they're at New England, at Baltimore. Those are easy losses. <laughs> yeah. Um. They do play Jacksonville again, it looks like. And they, got, they end the year with three divisional games. Tennessee, home. Houston, home. At Jacksonville. I think they can win one. I, I've been saying all year that they'll win one. I but have, it does, regardless, though, they will finish with the worst. Any yeah. of these other teams want to talk about suck for luck? Right. 
it's too late. You've already everyone else has won right. too many games. It, they will not win more than one. And what a unique NFL legacy. Jim Caldwell, the only coach of all time to make a run at sixteen and zero and zero and sixteen. That will never happen again. That's very interesting, there, Ricky. Yeah, yeah. I mean, by the way, he's bad. He went. Jim from, Caldwell is a bad coach. He went from <laughs> his first year in there. I, I was calling him Black Seifert, and look at him now. I mean, now things have really fallen apart. I can tell you like that one there. Well, I mean, that's what he was looking like there that that first year. It looked like he was coming in after Tony Dungy and going to keep it going and everything. He and, was badly out coached by Rex Ryan last year in the playoffs. He was badly, he and was. Peyton Manning knew it too. Do you remember yeah. that game? I don't know if you're. These are the little things that are always ingrained mm-hmm. in my mind that they showed Manning just like giving. Him the the return of the Peyton Manning face, yeah. real Peyton Manning face. He just got that sourpuss look on his face, just staring down Caldwell like, "I hate you. I want Tony Dungy back, or yeah. I want someone else to be in the spot." <laughs> but they're done. You know, Jacksonville. They obviously, by the way, Jacksonville, Cleveland. Oh, well, there's some dog games this week. Yeah, Jacksonville. If you live in if you live in Cleveland, mm-hmm. and this by the way, the Cleveland Browns are the second worst team in football. Okay. They're, they're, they're a home dog. There. They're a home dog to Jacksonville this week. Yeah. Now the line is they actually open as a one point favorite, but again using Vegas rationale. Okay. If you're at home and less than a three point favorite, Vegas is actually saying the road team is the better team. Right. Now I do think they can. Now that being said, I do think they're, if, if they're going to win, they can win at home against Jacksonville, a team they match up well with because the oh he needs a field goal probably to win that game. Right. But, um, you know. Jacksonville's a team I don't see winning many more games. Cleveland, believe it or not, I actually do see the potential for them to win a couple more. They're you know because oh, the schedule sucks. Yeah, but, but what's funny is remember we it's so funny with the Browns and we I feel we should hit them because we live sure. in Cleveland. We should hit a little bit more on the Browns just just skate through these bad teams. Yep, but the Browns. With them, it, it's so interesting that everyone you know the, the justification for them being kind of quasi contenders this mm-hmm. year. It reminds me of a game uh, a couple weeks ago in the NFL where San Francisco was at Washington. Okay. And a lot of betters, a lot of you know, good professional betters who I respect, mm-hmm. liked the Redskins in that spot as a three-point home dog. I didn't get that at all. Well, I'll tell you why. First of all, when you've been doing that, when, you, when you're in the professional, when you talk to these guys long enough like I have, right, right. Road fav- there's an old adage, if you're, on a, if you're betting an NFL road favorite, you're betting the wrong team. Okay. There, there's an, I, 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 I do. I have come to loathe road favorites because okay. it's always like you know Baltimore road favorite last week against Seattle. It's just it's always a better team. And when you look at it, sometimes, wait a minute, why is this team only laying this to uh, what looks to be an inferior team? Mm-hmm. Vegas is trying to trick you. That old trap. They're trying to lure you in and and get you. Now it doesn't always play out like that, and it didn't in that San Francisco Washington game. And I've, I've got a point here. Follow me here. Okay. I'm all over the place. All the justification for taking Washington, mm-hmm. none of it was positive about the Redskins. It was like, eh, you know, 49ers are coming off a couple big wins. Looks like a trap spot. Eh, this line makes no sense. Right. It was nothing like, oh, you know, the Redskins have been doing this. The Redskins have been doing that. And the way the Browns season, when mm-hmm. the way they came into this season, pardon me, was a lot of the same way when people thought they could be good. Eh, the schedule's really bad. Right. Oh, they haven't been good in so long. Don't you have to be good once? You know, there was nothing right. like, oh, this. You know, this part of the Browns is so good. Right. Yeah. So that, it, you know, see what I'm saying? Like to me, no, I know. And, and the what's interesting is the Bengals, who, by the way, everyone said I was crazy for for saying right. they would win at least five games. They already have six. Thank right. you very much. That's true. They're the team that's taking advantage of the bad schedule, not the Browns, because they have some good pieces moving. The Browns, the Browns have nothing. This is a right. hideous. If you live in Cleveland and you sit at home on your couch and watch this manure. The defense has been very good. Dick Duran's done an excellent job with what he has defensively. Dick Duran has done an amazing job. I won't deny that. They've, they've but if you sit at home yeah. on your couch and watch this manure, yeah. what is your problem? What is, I mean, what, what am I, I was I, I go out to BW3, because I, I have to watch, I, you know me, right. the way I am. I have to watch all the games right. once. And I had my back. To the Browns game, and, and I kept saying, "What is this sound in my ear? Will yeah. somebody shut this? I don't want to hear this I game." I, I turned it on at the end, and it was so funny. The guy at the table next to me is like, "You know, they should just try 
kicking the field goal on third down in case they screw it up somehow. Yeah. Eh, yeah. What do you have? Hey, there you go. The eyes have it. Yeah. By the way, why is t- you know why tailgating is so popular in Cleveland? Why? Yeah, nothing to celebrate after the game. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. By the way, Phil Dawson, and that's a, it, it, it's amazing that he misses the chip shot. He has hit some long ones this year. This is a man whose field goal range used to rival that of Shaquille O'Neal, and yet late in his career, he is hitting these long ones. <coughs> Roids. But yeah. anyways. Well, it, no, well, you're a legend. Yeah. <laughs> to me, look, there's no possible. They stink. Is Colt McCoy the long? I mean. He's got nothing to work with. He's got, he has the worst. What about this crew. Peyton Hillis? What uh, about that situation? You know, That's, to me, he was really polarizing. And, and you, you know I talked about this. It's so interesting. The, here's, the, I thought of this, too, not to get way off the beaten path right. again like we always do. But I thought of this. Right now, the once the – Jacksonville Jaguars become the Los Angeles Jaguars. Right. The NFL will be in the correct 32 markets. And what's interesting is, have you ever, have you ever thought about this? You probably haven't because only I would think of something like this. Ever, all the teams in our lifetime that have lost an NFL franchise, all the cities that have lost an NFL franchise, have yeah. got one back. Baltimore lost the Colts. They get right. the Ravens. Uh, the Cardinal, St. Louis loses the Cardinals. They get the Rams. Houston loses the Oilers. They get the Texans. Who's Cle- playing in Canton and Portsmouth right now? I mean, I said in our lifetime. Unless, oh, all right. unless, okay. if, unless if you're a lot older than I, I mean, look, I know I was a little surprised when you said how much earlier you went to you than I did when we first met Ricky, but I, I didn't think you heard, like, you know, I didn't think you were down in Athens back in 27, okay? Yeah. All right. It was 10 years. Okay, so. yeah. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, in the, you know, Houston got the Texans, Browns yeah. got the Browns okay. back. And Jacksonville it, never will, by the way. By the way, here's an interesting thing, Cleveland fan, because yeah. my point. Here's the thing. Cleveland should have an NFL team. Yeah. This is where I'm going with that. Because they have a passionate fan base that will support what has been a terrible product now yeah. for over 10 years. But it is a dumb fan base. They're a bunch of brain dads. It's and a, it's I'm a, very bitter about that because I always say a lot of the losers that are Browns fans deserve this team, deserve the karma. I don't. I don't deserve the karma that they visit upon me. I don't. I'm a good fan. Well, I, I educate myself. I follow it. And the thing is... and. On the one hand, it's wrong to say that the front office should have to take into account what a bunch of brain deads they have in the fan base. But Do they, they listen should. too much to the fan base? No, in this case, and, and this is going to sound very contradictory, they don't listen enough, even though these people don't deserve to be listened to. And here's what I mean by that. Please what explain, I mean by that I'm is, lost. Okay, because they, they clearly... Now, there are some rumors that Randy Lerner is restricting the pocketbook now that because... He's paying 18 coaches yeah. and, like, okay. And that, that because, and, and frankly, that, that, that makes sense. I, I would rather believe it's that than to believe that Tom Heckard is enough of a moron that he wouldn't give up a fifth-round pick for Brandon Lloyd or that he wouldn't go after Tashard Choice, who is a million times better than any of the backs presently on the Browns roster. I would rather believe that Randy Lerner is restricting them rather than to believe Holmgren and Heckard had their minds erased as soon as they got here. Uh, somebody somewhere <laughs> is screwing this thing up. I'd rather believe it's Lerner because that way if he opens up the checkbook again, everything can be reversed. But their plan, we're going to build through the draft, we're going to whatever. It's very clear they came into this year without a sense of urgency. We have no, uh, uh, we, we have two big holes on the offensive line, but it's okay. Wide receivers suck, but it's okay. Let's we'll trade out of the developing. spot. Yeah. Let's tra- even though Julio Jones. Yeah. Well, now, there's so many I people. wanted Julio Jones so you know badly. So, I, I, don't wanna... I knew that these moron fans would turn on Colt McCoy without him, and they've done that. Well, here's they've the thing. That, I don't want. I don't want. I hate talking about the Browns. No, I know, but I I'm going to talk about the okay. Browns because I feel that we've got a following here that yeah. wants to hear about them. Yeah. Here's what's it. There are so many contradictory things about the Browns. Yeah. It makes sense when you know. First of all, I think trading down is kind of a loser move, don't you? Is it? Does it not look like cheap people would do? It is. Okay. It, and here's the thing. Everyone always like espouses. You know, Bill, the great Bill Belichick for right. trading down. Right. How's that worked out for you, Bill? Because yeah. now everyone's ripping on him because they don't have a lot of talented players. Right. But what's interesting is they probably, you know, when you don't have, when you're, is we, when, I, that was the first thing I said about the Browns when we talked about them in our first podcast. Yeah. They're probably as weak at the receiver spot as any team in the league. Horrible. And, and that's certainly played out that way this year. Yeah. Should they have picked Julio Jones, though? Because he hasn't been that great. Yeah, and, 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 and Phil Taylor's done a, a very good job defensively, but wide receiver was such a gaping hole. And, and, well, and this year, though, coming yeah. up, as you know, is, is maybe the best draft ever best, for receivers. At least since 96. Yeah. Now, they could get out, if they do really bad down the yeah. stretch, they, they could wind up with Blackman from Oklahoma State or yeah. the kid Jeffrey from South Carolina, who could I be. love. He's not that 
Jeffrey's not as fast, but God, is he big. Yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, he is a monster for yeah. South Carolina. But here's the thing with, uh, so Jones, obviously, you know, should they have picked him? I don't know. But, but the thing with the Browns is, and I lost, as I lost my train of thought there, we were talking about, about the, the, the wide pick- receivers and, and, and how much they suck and, and, and the approach. That the the front office is taking. Okay, he, he, yeah. this is, I got back to it now. Thank okay. you for getting me. I, as I stumble, I, I totally <laughs> lost my train of thought. I was so upset. <laughs> Cleveland does need to build through the draft. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you a hard reality, Cleveland fan. Okay. In all sports, because I, I don't know if you know this. There's kind of a big time athlete who left the basketball team here to right. go to Miami. I don't know right. if you heard about that story. Free agents don't want to come to Cleveland. Okay, they they've don't. done it before. The Browns when they, the Browns have had a lot of cap room in the past. And- Ooh. Who? What great free agent has come to play for the Cleveland Browns? Hey, hey, again, Andre Risen? No. Well, here's the thing, and and you're gonna scoff when I say this, but it's it's not it's not Phil Savage's fault what happened next. Well, Charles Bentley, arguably the best center in the league when he signed with the Browns. Okay, that's. I true, mean, but, that was. But that's not. And not. not I'm to, not just not, talking. Not to go all skill, but not not to not to right. denigrate what you just said because right. you know, that is a good point. But game changers don't want to come here. Look at he, and it's All not right. just Cleveland. If there are five cities where it, it, it ain't exactly paradise in the NFL: Green right. Bay, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Detroit, Buffalo. Okay, Pittsburgh and Green Bay have been very good. Right. for a sustained period of time. The other three have not. Right. Detroit's starting to get good. Buffalo eh, a little bit. Cleveland not so much. Right. What's the difference between the two that are great? And the three that have not been the last twenty. Oh, years. they've hung on to their own players, right? and they draft, draft very, very well. well. Yeah, where Cleveland had not has drafted. Right. Cleveland is an is an abomination. You're telling the me though the, the Butch Davis era was terrible. Buffalo yeah. for years. I mean, when you look at their key contributors, they're not actually through the draft. They're some real you know guys they pluck from obscurity. Your Fitzpatrick, right. your Fred Jacksons. Right. Detroit under Matt Millen was terrible at drafting. Right, but now they got good because. Right. You look at their top players, they're all like number top five draft picks. Well, and, and it's a sign, again, the morons in the Browns fan base. I realize I'm the last guy in the world that still sticks up for this guy. I was screaming bloody murder when they whacked Phil Savage, and I will continue to do so. They were on track. I think they were drafting pretty well at the time there. Some of the foundation pieces came oh, to the Savage. team when he was the general manager. Yeah, I thought he was doing a good job. That's the thing. That, that they, they extend too much rope to the morons like Butch Davis and don't give enough rope to the smart people like Phil Savage. That's why I wanted to, to give a chance to Heckert and Holmgren and these guys and Shermer. But right now, again, I'm not happy with this. Here, This goes back to my original point on this. To build through the draft, build through the draft, build through Okay, you have to do that. It's a given. But and I, where I disagree with you, if they threw enough money in this and they have a ton of cap room, if they if they threw an outrageous contract at Dwayne Bow in the offseason, I refuse to believe that he wouldn't sign here. I refuse to believe that. If he got a comparable offer from a similar team, he would take the other team, I guarantee it. I understand that. But at the end of the I day, mean, it, it, you, they for us to attract room. someone, we would have to throw, like you said, an incredible offer that beats every other team to get somebody. Well, and, and, and do it because they're not oh, spending the money in, on, in any other way here. But I'm, it's not either or. You have to build through the draft also. But here, th- this is my original and there's problem some, here. That, that trade with Atlanta has set them up well through the draft. It, it has. It has. But here's the thing, and here's the problem. Holmgren and Heckert are sitting back there like, no, 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 no problem, five-year plan. Because of the morons in the fan base and talk radio inflaming things here, it, the city is in a fever pitch now. They won't get five years. They may not get three years at this rate. You, you cannot overestimate the rope that you have in a situation. True. It sucks. I wish the world wasn't this way. I wish the Browns fan base was was full of people who really could understand and grasp things. But every time there's a bad game, I've been suffering since 1999 when they came back. Okay, that was five regimes ago, you dipstick. But again, whoever comes in has to wear the crowns of the past regimes, they the crown of thorns for, for, from them and suffer for them. And Great that's mother thing. love bone song, by yeah. the way. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and uh, again, this this is the situation. But you we, never answered my question about Peyton Hillis, by the what, way. What about, okay, well, I, I think what it, he is, he's like the poster child for getting sucked into the morass that is created by talk radio. And for as much as people say the Cleveland media is a bunch of pushovers, let me tell you something. The plane dealer increasingly is taking their cues from talk radio in the last couple of years here. It's a oh. thing where Peyton Hillis has has become a victim of the climate. I don't think that the guy necessarily 
has developed a bad attitude overnight or this or that or whatever, but it's one of these things where we've all been in situations. It happens to me on a regular basis. You, you do something wrong, you try to turn around the other way, or you do something else wrong, and you just he's having one of those bad days that's being spread across an entire season and everything the guy does wrong leads to the next thing that goes wrong he doesn't have bad intentions but by this point everybody's ready to crap on him you have a fan base that i am not lying to those who are outside of this area i'm not lying when i say people will literally believe in the supernatural just to make themselves feel worse it's the madden curse only in cleveland you you hear crap like this from people on just a regular basis, and and again, and you know, I I've laughed about this. I mean, and I I have I have a couple of friends uh, who went to work there in in Cleveland, where we're based out of. Uh, there's a, a a second sports talk station that just sprung up uh, at the end of August, which I find to be infinitely better than the the, the other uh, one there. Two. But uh, yeah, I do, I do. I'm not, I'm not. But I find. But here's the thing, though. I and I I always say though, I'm bitter because. You know, what had been my favorite music station has switched to the new official format of bitching about the Browns. Yeah. That might as well be their new official yeah, yeah, format. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. You know. But, um, well, that's enough about the Browns. Yeah, I, we, I'm we, sick about the Browns. Because let me tell you something. This, this, I'll tell you what. The team's not winning more than six games. No, they're not. They'll no, they're not. Five. I said seven beginning but of the year. There's three. We, we kind of jumped through this. Remember yeah. I, in the format? Buffalo, Tennessee, Cincinnati. I don't know if, Hipsters. by the way, George yeah. W. Bush or Roger Goodell is the uh, commissioner <laughs> of the NFL with the shrinking middle class in this league, okay? But um, do any of those three make the playoffs? Oh, well, well, no. I mean, you said no. no. Well, well, Hipster teams, all, one and all. Cincinnati's cl- beat both of the other two, so they're clearly the class. But I said this when they were 6-2 and two going into last week's game against the Steelers. And this is including a game against the Browns, by the way. Yeah. Don't be surprised if they're 6-6 six and six after 12 games. They could be. They're frauds. Yeah. Uh, it, it's not a given that they're going to beat the Browns again. I, I love no, it everybody's... isn't. It's a revenge. Yeah, it's a revenge game. Yeah. I always look at those games. Revenge games. I know the Jets just blew one. Yeah. But revenge games in the division, yeah. you know, you can't just mark that automatically right. as a win. And they're. I'm sorry, they don't match up well with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. They'll no, they lose don't. those other two. So they're at best 7-5. and five. Yeah. Buffalo has been exposed. I was all over the Jets two weeks ago when yep. they played the Bills. Yep, People thought too. that was going to be a big statement game for the Bills. It was a big statement game for the Jets. Yep. Uh, and you and Tennessee, I called it. Yeah, and Tennessee, eh, yeah, they, they just don't excite me. Even though I've got to say, to be 5-4 and four right now with Chris Johnson playing as poor as he's played. And no Kenny Britt. Is, you know, you got to give a little tip of the cap to yeah. Tennessee right now. Yeah. I just I just don't see them getting it. I, I see all three of those teams being like 8-8, eight 9-7 and, eight, nine and seven at the end of the year. Yeah. And ultimately, I just don't think any of them I are mean, better than the Jets. Even if Munchak is, you know, what he is, a heartless bastard who fires cancer patients, you know, but, uh, you know, he's he's managed to make it pay. Well, that, that's what happened. We know that. We all know that. But, you know, it's he's, he's made it work. Uh, but, again, they're, they're, it, that, that's a hipster special right there if anybody thinks they're going to make it. So, uh, so we're sticking with the elites. We, we I, are. I've, I've crossed over to your side we here. Are. I'm sticking with we the are. And, That's pretty you know, amazing that at this point of the year, and we're just a little past the halfway point, right. I'm sticking with the six teams that I picked before the year to make right. the playoffs. Right. That'd be pretty and, crazy to go six for six. That, that doesn't happen a lot. Uh, amazingly enough, uh, we, the, the time we've spent on the AFC is about the total time we spent on the NFL the last time we did this. Oh, really? As we move into the NFC. Oh, here, yes. boy. Closing oh. in on an hour on the AFC alone. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's what happens when you and I do yeah, these podcasts. Oh, just, yeah. You know, hopefully you, you got something. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully you got something. You put, you know, a nice frosty <laughs> beverage when you listen to me and Rick Morris do it. Okay. I exactly. was wondering at one point, I'm like, ooh, baby, yeah. we're going again, we aren't are, we? We are, yeah. Right, the it's, NFC. Uh, well, NF- this just in the Packers. Are the, do you want to just quickly yeah. transition I mean, to the yeah, NFC yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, let's do it. You know, okay, Packers no break again. or anything like no taping? We're not you, you know, going no, no, to bring, we're not gonna switch out Howard Fingle for Mel Phillips here? <laughs> okay. Um, okay, the Packers. Do you think the Packers will go undefeated? I do not. I think they'll stub somewhere along the way. Let me see. G, I, G I think, comes before I in the alphabet quite, still, quite right? Quite frankly, yes. Uh, oh. p- quite possibly against Detroit, uh, if not one time, then the other. Detroit is not, by, by the way, trust me, I know this because the my boss the, mm-hmm. is, is, is legendary for always telling me how every year his Thanksgiving dinner is ruined because <laughs> all, of, all, all of the experts, uh, you know, and once again, I'm not on this guy. I'll tell you when we lose. I'll tell you when we win. Yep. You know, every year, everyone keeps waiting for the Lions to not only not, – 
not necessarily win because they're always an underdog, as bad as they've been, but at least cover a Thanksgiving Day game. Right. I think they failed like eight years in a row to cover on Thanksgiving. Wow. So betters, who are because I think that game's going to get a lot of action. It's obviously going to be a very big game when they host Green Bay on Thanksgiving Day and un- what's going to be an undefeated Green Bay team because Green Bay's not going to stumble against Tampa Bay at nope. home. Tampa Bay's regressed badly, even much worse than I thought they would this year. That's a Bucks team I liked last year, as you know. Mm-hmm. But the line... <laughs> That's going to be the smallest line Green Bay probably faces all year. But I'm with you. They either stumble there or the next game at the Giants. Winning back-to-back road games in this league, pretty tough. They they have done it once this year, Carolina and Chicago back in weeks two and three. Yeah. But this is the only other time they will play back-to-back road games. They're not going to lose to Oak. Oakland is an atrocious December team, particularly on the road in early starts. They will not lose to a bad Kansas City team. And then they play. Well, they do close at home against both Chicago and Detroit. It'll be interesting if they go for the if they're fourteen and zero. Mm-hmm. It'll be interesting if they go for the sixteen and zero, because they. I, although the 49ers, to me, as much as the Packers are guaranteed number one, the 49ers have guaranteed themselves number two when you look right. at the schedule. The Packers are ahead of them enough where I don't think they're going to have to play to keep home field advantage. It's going to be a question of do they want to go for sixteen or do they just want to rest starters? Well, and I tell you what, it, it's it's a thing where. They're lucky that Aaron Rodgers is having this year for the history books that he is because that pass defense is sort of New England light right about now. That pass defense similar. has it's fallen similar off. Situation. They're not but, as bad. But they but they have better players, and they make plays. I mean, they, they had do. the two pick sixes against San Diego. I would rather Diego. have Woodson than anybody. That, yeah, I would uh, rather have – I don't care yeah. what the stats say. I would much rather have Green Bay's defense than New England's defense at the end of the day. Sure. And, and again, it, is it mental? Because be. with Aaron Rodgers – so you just kind of, if you're green, I mean, you're always winning by so much. Yeah, it's true. And, and, and by the way, can we just close the book on this debate? Uh, not to rehash this thing. Okay. Ted Thompson, the greatest decision in the history of sports I business said at the time, to get rid of to get rid of Favre the way he did and go yeah. Roger. I mean, is there any debating this he, now? I said at the time he needed to do it. Once again, you have to find out what you have. Yes. Yeah. And. And you entered, and remember, it's so hard to follow a legend. He energizes fan base behind yeah. the new guy, which is very difficult to do. Just as Jay Fiedler and Brian yeah. Greasy. He, and, and now it's just—I mean, the guy is unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, he is just unbelievable. And you know, it's so funny now. Everyone's kind of turned their attention to Green Bay. They haven't—they weren't really the story in the first half I of the season for the most the part. Season. And you and I both, they were, yeah. they, both of us picked them to win the Super Bowl because we liked how they were kind of under the radar. You know, the AFC had some of its storylines, Patriots, Jets, the Eagles, who have been a colossal flop, were the bigger story in the NFC. I liked the position the Packers were in coming in the year, and there is no way. I mean, to me, who is the, the number two team in most people's power ratings? You had them number two, I think, mm-hmm. San Francisco? Did you or did you have them two or three? I've moved up to two now. Okay, yeah. I have them at two as well. Yeah. Is there anybody other than Jim Harbaugh probably who would take the 49ers to no. beat the Packers in in Lambeau in the no. NFC Championship game? No way, man. It, it, the only team that I I think where there could be a chance, and again, the thing that Green Bay had a big advantage because this team's not great in the cold weather, New Orleans. If it's a shootout. They, and they beat them. I mean, yeah. They kind of beat them at that game. Oh, they did. They and, did. I, I guarantee you, though, the one, you know, Sean Payton won't make the same mistake in this postseason that he did last year. They went up to Seattle, and I understand that his— well, Again, Quest Field is a hard place to play. Yeah, well, will, you, will you give it? I refuse to give them any credit. I, I give all the blame, as it were, to Sean Payton's pregame speech to his team. You could go beat those guys wearing your flip-flops. And they pretty much tried to do that. So— I mean, it was. It, it, you're not going to see that happen again. You, it's, it, you, you've got with the Saints. It's interesting because I think the last time we did the podcast, mm-hmm. I had them for a while as my number two team. They had only had that one loss to Green Bay. Yeah, uh, or on the first week of the year, they were there. Now they have no chance to get a buy. I no. think the buys are so sewn up in the NFC. There is. It's going to be Green Bay and San Francisco. I'm telling you. It's, yeah. I, I don't care that it's week 10. We've only played 10 weeks. I'm right. telling you right now. I guarantee it. It's Green Bay one, San Francisco two. But and New Orleans, you're right. To me, New Orleans, they're so great in that dome. They've been shaky on the road. Mike Smith kind of handed him a gift last yeah. week in the game against the Falcons. But the Saints are a lot like the Ravens when you look at their season, don't you think? Yeah. In that they've got 
you know, they've played very well. They've got some real great wins, and they've got some kind of head scratching losses. St. Louis, they yeah, lost to. That's true. They lost to Tampa Bay. Yeah. Um, obviously, lost to Green Bay is excusable in week one. They lost to Tampa before Tampa was sliding as much. You always have to look at when you lose to somebody. It's true, but Tampa, Tampa Bay Tampa blows Tampa, now. Yeah, but Tampa hasn't played well all season. No, true, true. You said, I mean, they were they're kind worse of, now if, than if they you, were. If you looked at then. them, I mean, I remember yeah. I was shocked when they right, lost to Tampa right. Bay, and obviously everyone was shocked when they lost to St. Louis. But New Orleans, I think by virtue of going to Atlanta and winning again, I, I picked them to win the division before the year in yeah. close, what you know was a close race with Atlanta. Uh, that, divi- that division, by the way, has never seen a repeat champ in its history. Uh, right, right. And I, I don't I, think it will. Atlanta I picked will, it the Atlanta, other way around. Atlanta yeah. will not repeat. I think the Saints are going to get the three seed. Yep. Okay, so we agree on that. Yeah. That would leave, then, the East winner to be the four seed. Who is it going to be? I, I, I think we talked about this last time. I still like the Cowboys. How about them, Cowboys? I'm the gonna... schedule sets up so well. People, but Cow- That's Cowboys fans kind of you know ace in the back pocket. If you've been listening, yeah. everyone talks about the schedule uh, for the next three, four weeks. And, I mean, I can tell it to you, I'm telling you, Dallas is going to pass the Giants well, and win that division. They, they may very well, and the Giants are guilty until proven innocent in terms of holding on because a couple of years in a row I picked the Giants to win that division and make some noise in the playoffs, really, since they won the Super Bowl, and they haven't done crap. They, they have faded badly in a couple right. second halves you know, in the post plaxico Burris era there. And I think if yeah. they do it again, does it? But it's been all fades for Dallas for the last several years as opposed to the second well, half. Well, last, I mean, year, last year they got to that terrible start and Wade okay. Wade Phillips. But Dallas, here's Dallas. Okay, they're at Washington this yeah. week. Again, tricky road favorite. It could be closer than the experts think, by the way, Ricky. Yeah, the, the Vegas experts? A little closer than the experts Vegas think. Vegas well, than, than the line. All right. And, but then they're at home for Miami. Okay. Okay, win. At Arizona, they'll have more fans in the yeah. stands than the Cardinals. Uh, then there's the huge one on twelve eleven here, where they host the Giants in Jerry World. Okay. Then they're at Tampa, should be a win. Yeah. Then at home for Philly, huge revenge game. By the way, they got killed by the Eagles in the first one. Right. Then at the Giants, I don't see them losing more than two games. I got the Cowboys ten and six. Winning the division, but they've been huge underachievers the last couple of years. The one they're thing, starting though, to hit their stride the last couple well, of weeks. Have you? Did you watch this? Des Bryant yeah, is for real. He is, and, and and here's the thing too. I think a lot of times maybe if teams are looking to get over a hump, they they need something. They need some kind of talisman to believe that that it's different now because of thus and such. And they what they've gotten out of Demarco Murray has been their best running game in years. I mean, and it's so funny because the last couple of years we've been talking about how deep they are at running back and one, two, three, mm-hmm. and whatever. And now it's a matter of being kind of top-heavy, albeit you still have Felix Jones to come here and do stuff. Pretty good back. But DeMarco Murray you can't looks be... like a franchise back. Again, too. That doesn't surprise me. I watched this kid in right. Oklahoma. He was good. Again, right. you talk about teams building through the draft, right. not to bring this thing full circle or anything like that, or go back, you know, before we instead of going forward. But how do you, all these teams miss on them? Like, to me, DeMarco Murray, when did they draft him? When was he drafted? Oh, it was you know, third or fourth round, something like how that. Did, how do teams just pass no, I on know. a guy like that? I know. I don't to get me, it. Like, like, it's one of those things that, and I'm a huge college football fan. We'll be talking college football here in a minute, too. Yeah. I like good players on good teams in college. Right. It's the kind of thing, and I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that or say that I predicted DeMarco Murray would be great. Or By the way, Jerry right. Jones, he's not the next Eric Dickerson. But <laughs> it's the kind of thing when, if you were to have shown me, I guarantee you, if you were to show me the Cowboys draft in May, yeah. like here's who the Cowboys drafted. Kyle, take a look. Like, I'm, I guarantee you, I would have said, I like this DeMarco Murray pick. You know what I think it was? I like this DeMarco because it's one of those things – he was a good player on some good teams, and, you know, I mean, Dallas, is, it's a great spot for him to He's land. He's not a big measurables guy, but the th- you know, think, and not to put too much pressure on him, neither was Emmett Smith. Yeah. So, you know, there, there, there's more to life than measurables, certainly. Sure. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Giants over the Cowboys just because I'm more suspect of the Cowboys. Here's the thing. But the schedule's... E- even when... And by the, here's the Giants' schedule, by the way, before we keep doing this. Philadelphia at home, now that... Given the way the Eagles have just collapsed, yeah. that should be a win. But I'm, are the Eagles really going to lose again? Yeah. I know Vic is questionable, but are, are they just going to keep losing? I mean, I, is it? Oh, don't they have to win? They, they, they pretty much do. I'll tell you what. This right here, this is going. That's going to be the ultimate statement for the Giants this year. The Giants need if I, I, if the Giants win that game, they'll win the NFC East. That that game is going to be a statement that they're for real. If they put the final nail in, in Philadelphia's coffin, what are they up by two right now in Dallas? 
or one? Uh, one. I one. It's six and three to five and four. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Here's the Giants' remaining schedule at New Orleans. They've been pounded by the Saints yeah. in previous years. Won't That's going to be a loss. Yeah. Green Bay. We. I said that the, they, they could. They could be one of the teams that could be. They're one of two teams that could beat the Packers. At Dallas, that's a huge division game on December 11th. Uh, at home for Washington, that's the one game I will definitely they'll give massacre them. massacre them. Because they'll, they'll, it's a revenge game. They yeah. lost as a road yeah. favorite yeah. in week one. They will uh, disembowel them. Huge game at the Jets. Uh, well, at the Jets. It's, it's really <laughs> versus, but, you know, I mean, that's hey, a tough it's the game. other locker room, yeah, man. Yeah. And then Dallas. The cl- Let's be honest. A much easier schedule for Dallas. You're Let's right. Let's be honest, though. January 1st. Dallas at the Giants, that probably I mean, winner neither, take all. Neither team is going to build a two game margin no. by then. Winner so, take all. Yeah, that's going to be. Now, here's the thing that's interesting, though. I thought all along that the NFC East, mm-hmm. I know, which is the greatest division ever, according to most media outlets, would only be a one playoff team division. Sure. I don't know if I believe that anymore. I can both. The Eagles are done, obviously, right now. They. I kept. Like you said, it's funny. Like with last week's loss, you officially wrote them off. Right. I was like you. I was like, you know, if they just get hot, they could maybe go nine and seven, ten yeah. and six, get that last playoff spot. Right. But I mean, at three and uh, what are they? Three and three six. And six. Three yeah. and six. Three. I mean, you, you essentially have to win because in the NFC, it's going to take ten wins this year again, and you can't blame the West this year because the Forty right. ers are going to have more wins than you. So they've right. got to win out. The Eagles have got to win out, and I don't yeah. see the Eagles winning out. No, they're not. They're not so, going. So they're to. not going to make it. Washington's that. Do can both Dallas and the no, Giants make no. it? No, no. You don't I, think, I think so? Re- I think that's ridiculous. Because again, ridiculous. Go, yeah, because I'll, t- I'll I'll tell you exactly why. I'm going to go back to the South. Now, while I picked Atlanta to win the division and New Orleans to be the wild card, I'll say I, I, I said already New Orleans will win the wild card. Atlanta's or, I'm sorry, New Orleans will win the division. Atlanta's got the wild card there, and I will stand by the Detroit Lions winning the wild card out of the NFC North. I called it coming into the season at nine and seven, and they will do so, Kyle Ross, with a record better than the nine and seven I forecast them. How about that? I don't like the Lions, and it has You've nothing. Been to, it, all it, and, and maybe it has something to do with that I was not on their bandwagon <laughs> to start the year, but but. I, I don't like. I don't know. Part of me, I kind of. And I don't like the Bears. I'm no Bears fan either. When I go to Chicago, right. my, my friends get really upset with me when I just. Say, I'm like, how is your team good? I'm like, how did your team win? I games? know, I know. I but, hate the Bears for but, that. But the Bears are a fraud. But somehow they keep squeaking out these fluke look, games. I'll tell you what, though, it was no fluke what they did to Detroit last week. They annihilated uh, them. A game that they wanted. Now I know the total. Now I'm a big fan of looking at the total yardage again. I know they yeah. lost that battle, but. They had, and they had three non-offensive touchdowns in that game, which is huge. Right. But they crushed. I mean, they wanted the game, and they, they just did. beat up, a, again, a revenge game in the division. They wanted it more. The wild card picture is real tough because you're right. Atlanta's a contender. Right. But they've lost. They did, now, they beat Detroit, but they lost to Chicago, Atlanta. Right, right. I, I, I am, I'm going to chicken out right here. Okay. I cannot – I had Atlanta – before the year, my wild card – I had Dallas as a wild card. Okay. I'm not projecting them to win that division. All right. Uh, and then I had Atlanta as the other wild card. Okay. I am moving Philadelphia out. Okay. okay. I had Philadelphia yeah. winning the East. They are not going to make the playoffs. I'm chicken. I don't know who the last, my other my sixth playoff team is going to be in the NFC. It's going to be between Atlanta, Detroit, Chicago, and the Giants. And right now, I don't. I cannot definitively say who I like better out of those four teams. Okay. I, I I guess it's good. Well, hold on, hold on. Detroit's going to get in. Detroit, Detroit will get in. I'm sorry. Yeah. Detroit will get in. I'm sorry. Okay. I, don't, I only named four teams. I only, Detroit will be one of those wild. It's going to be two of those teams get the yeah. wild cards. Yeah. I'm sorry. I messed up there. I'm saying Detroit and Atlanta. I think Detroit will get in. It just feels right. You know, they had a yeah. the good start. That'd be pretty. I mean, they have not played well the last couple weeks. Right. But it would be a pretty bad collapse to start 5-0 and and miss the playoffs. But then it's Chicago, Atlanta, and the Giants. I don't know. Atlanta is not has not played well this year, man. They have not. Matt Ryan, by the way. Moments. He's talking about overrated. Everyone wants to rip on Matt Te- Ice. Yeah, everyone wants to rip on Tebow and Mark Sanchez mm. and Tony Romo. Okay, what's Matt Ryan done? Okay, is this did this guy get the nickname Matty Ice because he's clutch or because he went a ham at a BC kegger back in 05? <laughs> okay, that's my question. Guy's got he's got four less playoff wins than Mark Sanchez okay. for those keeping score at home. All right. And here's the thing too, Mike Smith. It's interesting, and I'm not going to crush the guy. For the decision of going for it was it was right. wrong. It was because here's the thing: even if you get it, you still got to go a long way to get to field goal range. That's what no one fails to mention. Last week in the overtime game, you go for it fourth and one at your own twenty-nine. 
Okay, let's say you get it. Right. You still got to go, what, 20? You still got to go, like, 35, 40 yards to get in a field goal range. By the way, uh, for all you historians out there, what was that reminiscent of? Hint, if you were reading the Skip Clueless books back in the 90s, well, who, who did all, that before? First of all, I like Skip Bayless, and I like Skip those Clueless. books. And I, okay. like the, I like those all right, books, who, who by did, the way. Who did that, by Barry the way? Barry Switzer. Barry did. Switzer, yeah. yes, yes. Barry Switzer exactly. did Exactly. And, and Bill yeah. Belichick, remember the game against Indianapolis on a Sunday night? That's I, true. I, it wasn't an overtime game, but yeah. it was late in the game, and everyone ripped it. I don't agree with it, but here's the thing. It brings up an interesting point that I thought going into that game. Is Mike Smith really the guy to lead Atlanta? Like, does he seem like an elite coach? Like, what can you tell I, me? What can you tell me about Mike? I'm, I'm not like looking for the guy's hobbies or anything, but other than the fact that he's the Atlanta Falcons head coach, what can you tell me about Mike Smith? Most people, I would wager, Ricky, do not know where he came from. From you, Jacksonville. Well, you're not most people, okay? okay? And you answered right. the question before I gave people a chance to think. <laughs> okay. okay. Yes, I knew oh, that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Were, were we waiting for somebody to chime in? Here yes. At third yes. party. Yes. Okay. Yeah. My neighbor, I believe. Yeah. He, 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 he was overhearing, and he was going to knock on the window. He's the Jaguars' defensive coordinator. <laughs> but you, most people don't know that. And is he? You know, because here's the thing: they're going to probably finish at, at nine and seven. And this is kind of you know, it's not saying much, but the golden age of Atlanta Falcons football. Right. Because they have. They, remember before they he arrived, they had never won. Remember this stat? Mm-hmm. He, they had never produced a winning record in back-to-back seasons right. prior to his arrival. They've done right. three straight years now. Yep. First time ever. You do the math. No playoff wins. And, I mean, are you banking on this team to make a run in this year's playoffs? I don't know about I, it. I think at most they win a game. I don't. And I, that sounds about right to me. I, I think the, the odds are decent that they win a game. But he and Thomas Dimitrov, to me, are turnaround specialists. Dimitrov? They, doesn't sound like a guy you'd like, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, wasn't he a tag team partner, Crusher Khrushchev yeah, back I don't in the know. 80s? Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, they're, they're turnaround specialists. They have come in there on the ruins that were left behind, the, the, the urinated upon ruins left behind by Bobby Petrino and Michael Vick. <laughs> Woo, big swing! Yeah, <laughs> they came in there. And hey! The guy, guy who tacked up a goodbye note in the locker room on his way out. Yeah. Nice little F you. He might, he hey, might as you, well, know, you know what's funny, though? What? Like, he, he kind of followed in the footsteps of Saban, and, and you know, I, I, no one's complaining down south in Fayetteville and Tuscaloosa, no, you know, that's that, that true. those methods. You know, it's kind of funny that, you know, both of those guys <laughs> failed NFL coaches, but, you know, hey, but you, Ar- we'll talk about Kyle Arkansas. To, well, good to team. quote the great Mi- I'm not supporting what he did. It was, it was gutless what to, he did. To, to quote the great Mitchell Kane from the great movie, the great white hype, history is written by the winners. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But Atlanta, here's the thing with Atlanta. They do have back-to-back home games now to get over the New Orleans right. loss. Tennessee and Minnesota, those should both be wins right. coming up. If, if, right. if they win both those games, that puts them at 7-4 and four, heading into the final five. And I'm looking at the schedule here. I see a Carolina I, who, again, you know, is I was really disappointed in Cam Newton last week for losing the way they did yeah. to Tennessee. But I see home game against Jacksonville, home game against Tampa Bay. This team should finish with ten wins. Yep. Um, now that I look at it, the Giants. But here's the thing: it's gonna it's gonna be a tie. It's gonna be a messy. Can we agree on that? It's gonna yep. be a messy tie. It's, it's going breaker. to the grid. It's yeah, going it's, to the grid. And Chicago, man, they're look. I hate Jay Cutler, but he's playing I very have well. No idea how they're doing it. I have absolutely look, no idea. Pe- I mean, Matt Forte should be a contender for league MVP. I agree. But aside from that, I have no idea how they're doing. Well, it. their defense is very, has always been very good. And here's the thing too. If you look inside the numbers, the Chicago Bears the last two years yeah. during this, have had abnormally great special teams. The, exactly. I, and obviously Devin Hester's kind of the head, you know, on the marquee. First of all, I always talk about, you know, I saw this last week in a TCU-Boise State game. Right. When TCU takes the lead, they kick the ball off with like a minute left. The idiot kicks it out of bounds and Boise right. State gets to the 40. I always say, I would just cut that guy's scholarship and say, you can't go to school here anymore. Right. By the same measure, if you're a punter, if, if I was an NFL head coach, big stretch, mm-hmm. and my punter punted the ball to Devin Hester, I don't care if he fair caught it at his own five. I would cut the man. Right. You, you, how, what are you doing punting to this guy? Right. But, but it's other thing, too. Like net, I mean, Obviously, he's a big player in this. Right. But their net punt yardage has been ridiculous the last That's season true. and a half. And those are like bizarre stats you've got to really look into. The, the, the That's Bears, how the Bears win it. And, and, win. And here's another fact. Uh, of, of all the loose footballs uh, that have been on the field in the last year, they have fallen on 150% of them and recovered them. <laughs> yeah. All right, there's a stat for you. So it, it, it's things like that. We talk about the – you're right about the defense. I mean, 
to an extent, we, we tend to think of, like, to me, like, the peak of their defense, as I think of them, was the Dick Duran year of 2003. That was when they've been. That was their best one, probably was that since the year the, when they like when they, they were, were thirteen and three. They were Mike real Brown, high. yeah, Mike Brown had the great year in the secondary, and, but but they flamed out in the playoffs. Then they, they lose. To, out, they, yeah. they lost to McNabb. They, they did. Yeah. They did. But that year, like to me, that was the quintessential Bear defense, best since '85. Since then, they've had years where they've been very good. Even their Super Bowl year of '06, I didn't think uh, where, they, where they won the NFC Championship. I didn't think was as good as Ooh. that. I look at them, they're very good, they're way above average, they're not great enough to be carrying this team to what they've done. It's more the luck factor, special teams, etc. Things that have carried over from last year, which were not supposed to have carried over from last year. In other words, they are, they're they due to lose like their next 30 in a row. They've well, used up enough luck through 2014. Well, I got some interesting uh, information for you here what? as I consult my handy-dandy schedule that I've been looking at. What? Uh, the Chicago Bears' next four games come against the AFC West. Oh my! I, I I remember how I said I'm going to be gutless and not commit to the last yeah. wild card. I because they beat Atlanta, because they're a game better than Atlanta right now. Yeah. Look, well, wait, but me and you were picking the Chargers to win the AFC West, so we got to give this game to the Chargers. Got to, got to. It seems a little in your something's rotten in Denmark <laughs> line of the week. Why are the Bears only laying three and a half against San Diego this week? Doesn't that seem too little given? And now, Sandy, or now is San Diego being overestimated by the odds makers, or the public, or are they banking that the public is going to underestimate the, the Chargers? Uh, I, it's pro- it probably has to do with the public. It, it generally does. Would you bet? I wouldn't bet the game. I wouldn't bet San oh, Diego is a road would, dog in Chicago. But after that, they're at Oakland, home for KC, at Denver, Seattle at home. Ooh. So, okay, their next five games are the AFC West and Seattle, Ricky. What are they? At worst, they're going to be. They're going to. At worst, they're going to be three and two in that stretch. At worst. And that puts them at nine and five at Green Bay, at Minnesota. Okay, well, maybe. Holy crap. That is okay. I, here's right now. I'm going to project. We'll, we'll we'll be done with the NFC like this. I'm going to say Chicago beats Atlanta with the tiebreaker, and Mike Smith costs his team the playoffs because that, because because that call last week. I'm going to say no, just because I do believe in the law of averages. And again, they've been so lucky. They've I, saw, had every I break want to go say that, way. but I've been saying that about Chicago. I remember when but it a looked season like, and a half. They're way overdue, man. They're way overdue. I remember when it looked like with Caleb Haney last year, they were going to come yeah. back and steal the NFC Championship game against Pittsburgh. I'm not lying to you. You can ask Brian, my old roommate, Brian Landers, you mm-hmm. know who you know. I ripped my T-shirt. It was a T-shirt just like this, uh-huh. shades of Hulk Hogan, I, because I had a very <laughs> large wager on the Packers in that game because I was so, like you're saying, I was so sick of the Bears yeah. and their lucky ways. I loved Rodgers. I, I, I'm like, there is no way the Chicago Bears are beating Green Bay. Most Bat. undeserving team ever to host an NFC Championship game. I don't game, care the if they've got the home field advantage game. Yeah. The Packers are winning this game. And when it looked like with Caleb Haney, if you remember that game, there was about a five to ten minute window where – I, and, and granted, I am a miserable better to be around yeah. when things look like they're going to go the wrong way. I ripped my shirt off and just started screaming, I hate the Chicago Bears. I will not watch the Super Bowl if this team makes it. Uh-huh. And, and they didn't, thankfully. I won my wager. But I'm telling you, there's something about this team. This schedule, I don't know. It, will, it remains to be seen. Do they lose? Because they've won a lot of games that we don't think that they would go. That's go, what like, I'm saying. Like when they beat Phil. Like, I don't know about you, a couple weeks ago, that Monday nighter against Philadelphia. Yeah. I thought the, the the line was a little high. Philadelphia closed minus nine. That looks like a yeah. real terrible line right now. But I still thought the Eagles would win that game. So the Bears have won a lot of games we thought they'd lose. I think you know the last the year and a half. Does yeah. it does even it kind of work out. out the other yeah. way They're, where they lose a lot of games now that yeah. they're kind of, you know now yeah. that everyone's kind of like oh maybe Jay Cutler is good oh maybe maybe, maybe Mike Martz has learned his on. lesson does does Mike Martz say hey you know what Jay Cutler go back and take twenty steps well you know? and and by the way too. Uh, as, as FDH football analyst uh, and original lounge dignitary Nate Noy pointed out uh, exquisitely, uh, the only reason they were hosting the NFC Championship game was because of a bug in the playoff seating. They got Seattle instead of Atlanta, who had the best record last year, because Seattle, in their infinite wisdom, made the playoffs at 7-9 and nine as a division winner. Chicago hosted Seattle. If you were going by records, it would have been Atlanta. And, and, and we'd be looking at Mike Smith differently now if they'd hosted Atlanta, if they'd hosted Seattle as opposed to Green Bay. 
True. So yeah, that, that's that's, true. that's all thanks to the NFL's archaic scheduling for the playoffs here. That, that how we look at two separate franchises here, Chicago uh, and uh, also Atlanta. I think this is the it's, year. And the, the, well, the Giants are going to finish nine. And, I'm and you know you, what? There's going to be a lot. The rest of those are the other teams are going. I think start falling by the wayside. By the way, I'm going to go on the record right now. Okay. I know it's very difficult to do, but what do I always say? Buy low, sell high. Yeah. With team stock. I'm going to buy the Carolina Panthers big time for next year. What do we always say about the – I said we both agreed yeah. that the trend would not continue this year that has seen last-placed NFC South team jump up huge the right. following year. Right. We both said the lockout rookie quarterback, the division was looked pretty, str- right. little, pretty strong, the holdovers, New Orleans and Atlanta. Next year, look for, I think, that trend maybe to resurface. Yeah. They could I'm telling you right now, if you put some good pieces around Cam Newton – yeah, I think the Carolina Panthers next year are going to make a monstrous leap in that he, division. He has very good pieces on offense already. I mean, he they, they, does, they can yeah, still do he, better. He, he's made them better. Make you no know. mistake about it. People are like, oh, Steve Smith's so good. Steve Smith wasn't even the best player in the NFL oh. named Steve Smith the last couple That's of years. That's true. That's true. And uh, and, and WR2 is still a bit of Bermuda Triangle for them that it always has been. Mm-hmm. But by the same token, uh, by, by the way, last, last note on Atlanta-Chicago as I reflect on this, Atlanta, as I pointed out, got screwed by the system last year. That's all the more reason I'm going with Atlanta now. There's no way it happens That's twice. There's no you, way. By the way. <laughs> but you take a very you take Chicago a Chicago is the one percent. <laughs> yes. you, you take a very Michael Dukakis approach to your yeah. NFL analysis, which is quite surprising. <laughs> it's time to spread the playoff wealth, Kyle yes. Ross. Well, no, I, I mean Atlanta. I mean Atlanta. You're right. They're, they're I mean due. to me, I don't know, man. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a it's going to be one of those convoluted, tie-breaking finishes with, you know, whoever doesn't win the East, Dallas right. and the Giants, and then Atlanta and Chicago. Right. It's going to be very convoluted. But unlike last year where you had a, a 10-win team on the outside, Tampa Bay, who no one really bought anyway, right. so it wasn't that big of a deal. You can't blame the NFC West this year because you're going to right. have a 49ers team and that's going to win 12 or 13 we games. We have vowed not to address them aside from the 49ers. We've made good on that. Yeah, and the other teams, too, in the NFC, yeah. really. I mean, when you look at it, Redskins stink. Panthers building for next year. Bucks huge buyer last year. I said they would regress this year. Whoa, boy, have they regressed. Yep. Like I said, I watched that game last week at home against Houston. I thought that was a game they needed to win Tampa Bay. They lost it on the first play. Shaw right. throws a bomb. I'm telling you, Ricky, the year went out of the state of the game was over. Right. Um, it, uh, by, by the way. Minnesota is another team, too. Better than their record indicates. I know that I was like the only person when I, you know, I'll own up to anything I do on this on this show. Mm-hmm. First, I said Minnesota would be better than last year. Record-wise, they're not going to be, and they didn't do very well last year. They, no. I think they won, what, six games? But if Donovan McNabb wasn't so terrible, right. they should at least have four wins this year. They blew those back-to-back games where they had 20-point leads. Right. They should have won both those games. This should be a. This is this is another team next year. Right. I think maybe you, you want to buy because you know now it's kind of over. They got the rookie quarterback, and right. that move was made sooner than later. El Richo Grande, but the kids looked fairly decent. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a big reach. But by the way, uh, this this was I think this was Fo. He's got John. a little hipster beard, by the way. Uh, he does. And I think this was Fo John Madden who pointed us out on Twitter. Somebody did, and I immediately retweeted when I saw this. Christian Ponder. That's a name that sounds like I, I think he, I, I think he had tweeted and said sounds like a Kirk Cameron anti homosexuality iPhone <laughs> app. <laughs> you gotta like that. That is outstanding. <laughs> that is, that is yeah. outstanding. But you know, other than the teams, we, <laughs> that is really good. Other than the teams, we kind of like you know really went into. Nobody else deserves much mention, I think. No, they're all pretty bad teams yeah. inside the NFC. The bottom of that NFC is pretty bad. It is. It is. However, we talked about this off air. I think we can uh, probably bring it around on this note. Because of the strength of the NFC North and the NFC South, only the AFC North is really on a par with them. That's the reason I think there's a gap. The NFC, and, and this is part of my weekly uh, power rankings that I'm doing every week at the fdhlounge.blogspot.com. I do the power rankings in terms of how I rank the teams in, in the league. I add them up and I go by division. There's a 20-point gap. The NFC on mine is 20 points better than the AFC because the other three divisions in the AFC are really not so great. To horrible in, in some cases. Look, the AFC is generally viewed as the better conference the yeah, last couple of years. But not this year. Uh, well, this just in. Three of the last four Super Bowl winners have come from the NFC, yeah. including back-to-back years, keep in yeah. mind. And a lot of it's this year when you look at it is due simply to Green Bay as head and shoulders, okay. the best team in the league. But I'm, 
other than that, you're right. I mean, in the AFC, what hurts them is who is the best team, I think. But other than Green, I don't know. To me, I think the top five in the AFC mm-hmm. – could certainly match up well with the next five. If you take Green Bay out of the equation, yeah. would match up very well with the other five. You know, if you take You're out right. the AFC West winner, I think that I, I think it's it's a six to one half a dozen to the other argument. And by the way, how hilarious is this? Coming up uh, the week after this Thanksgiving, the NFL, which only looks at at, at stupid shallow marketing when it comes to this kind of crap. Now hey, I no, no. it's Thanksgiving. Let's go brother versus brother. Uh, Hardball no. versus hardball. And they have lucked into what will be one of the better games in the league this year. Now shame they, they on into you. It. That was Rick cynical. Morris. That was shame cynical. On Brothers you. on Thanksgiving, Kyle. You can't tell me that was a football scheduling decision. No, it wasn't. And I'll tell you what. What? Whoever made that decision my hats off to you for a job well done. What a brilliant move, brother. Brilliant. Vers- the- Nobody knew San Francisco was going to be. That. Don't even give me that crap. I'm not, I'm not say- no, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying going with the brother versus brother angle. This yeah. is just the cherry on the icing. I don't care if both teams are on top. How great is that? Not since Owen Hart ripped Bret Hart off the top <laughs> turnbuckle after the family feud match at 93. Have there, has there been a brother v. brother rivalry this they anticipated on Thanksgiving? <laughs> this is, what do you mean, shallow marketing? Shallow this marketing. is tremendous. Shallow. I say brilliant. This is tremendous. That looked like a garbage game back in August. I don't care if it looked like a garbage game back in August. It would be, in, even if it was a bad game, at least yeah. it's something interesting to talk about. Now it's even better because it's two things. My God. My, by God, King, an hour ago, <laughs> an hour ago, they were passing the stuffing to each other. Now they won't even talk to each other. <laughs> Come on. That's great. How can you not buy San Francisco Baltimore on it's Thanksgiving? It's going to be a very good and, game. And Green Bay Detroit. Well, now, I mean, arguably. A lot of people are going to be sleeping during that Dallas-Miami game. I'll tell you that much. You could have arguably four of the top five teams in the league playing at that point in time. I'm not and they and the last couple of things yeah. with some dogs. By the, and by the way, though, here's what here's what marketing gets you on the other game. And keeping in mind that Miami's my one A team, so I'm going to dog on them here. Dallas and Miami, really? As I do my best, Miz, really, hey, really? Too, too you could have gone for New England. You could have gone for the Jets, really? Kyle Ross, really? Miami, really? Well, you have to give somebody a break. You have to sleep between because the two. Because Leon Lett fell on a football in the oh, snow okay, you in '93. Know That's you know why. You it's know an what? angle. You know what? What? It, what a great decision again by the NFL, the dictator. That's great. It's going to be a horrible game. Well, at least we have we can show that highlight all the time. I love the Dolphins. I'll probably be wearing my jersey. It's two that big day, cities though: Marino Dallas jersey. and Miami. Good for the NFL. Well, and everybody Shula wins. And everybody wins and, on and they Thanksgiving. Played at a Super Bowl. Everybody wins on Thanksgiving yeah, this year. Yeah, that that should have been New England or the Jets. That was a horrible decision. That was a horrible decision. Well, okay, I guess it was, but I'm not yeah. going to beat him up over it. I mean, what do you want? What do you want? All right. So, all right. Well, I mean, I geez, I mean, what, what am I talking to the Tremont Tribune here? I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, come on now. I mean, it's fine. Give me the all NFL right. on Thanksgiving. All right. Well, what are you uh, going to watch? The college basketball marathon? I mean, what is that? <laughs> what are you going to do? Come on. I, I, yeah, the, I, I, I know you. Uh, the thing that probably kept you from enjoying the Carrier Classic was probably an excess of patriotism. Too much patriotism in it. <laughs> For you, Kyle. Yeah, sure, but, but, yeah but, but do you smell? What a, this Barack Obama. This guy's this guy. You know, I think a we get a ten-minute speech on what he's doing for returning veterans. How about that crap? Well, I believe we need to do more for our veterans, we don't do. you? We do, but I, I don't think his grandstanding is going to create any. Jobs. Well, he's he's just like me. He watches college basketball. <laughs> this is a president I can identify with. Uh, all right, let's bring this full circle here. Picks for the Super Bowl. We've been updating as we've gone along in the year. My picks going in. I said Patriots over Packers. I'm going to stay with that. I'm going to stick. I'm going to go with the pick. Ironically enough, that I went at the beginning with of last year. Did I spit okay. that out right? Packers Ravens. That was my pick before that... last year, and I'm going to pick it now. It was Packers Jets. I'm going to go Packers Ravens now. If the Jets go, I'm going to claim this. Never in happened. 2010, hipsters from coast no, to coast were hipster. picking Ravens Packers. That was a well-educated. <laughs> that was a well-educated opinion. Well, of my the opinion. Packers ended up holding up their end of the bargain. Now that that could be the case this year. And the Ravens, uh, hey, they they played they played uh, the Steelers tough. They lost too much. By the they way, did. this upcoming week. Give me, mm-hmm. give me a top play. If you come up with a top play this week, I like Atlanta over Tennessee. I think Atlanta tap twos Tennessee. And also, let me go a little exotic on you, Ricky Morris. Here, okay. you ready for this? Yeah. Over forty-three, Buffalo, Miami. Over over forty-three. Yes. Buffalo's come off a couple low-scoring games. Miami's gone has gone under the total in eight straight weeks. What are they going to go under nine straight games? Come on. 
Well, I, no, I think you're right about that. Okay, well, come okay. on. That, 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 that's, as many of my friends know, that's my betting rationale. Sometimes <laughs> it can be very suicidal and non-profitable at times. You're the anti-Mark Lawrence. Yes, I, when I, when I, I say. I mean that in a good way. Yeah, I, mean, I can only mean that in yes. a good way. Well, when I say, oh, you know, well, come on, this team's lost. the third team 20 years in a yep. row in college football. What, what's that? What was your pick? Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Ravens over Bengals. I like that pick yeah. as well. That was my second Bengals top are side. Fraud. Yeah. Uh, the, other, the other one, I would go, I'll would i go back to uh, Chargers over Bears. I'm calling it. You're going to bet your money on the San Diego Chargers. That just happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. And what better way to sign off than with a ballsy pick like that and the closing words, Rick Morris, Kyle Ross, always protecting America.